Shabbat Shalom, Haki and Hakov. This series is about the history and practice of the Christian Christmas celebration. The presentations on Facebook are between five and 10 minutes long. The presentations in total are about 20 minutes long each. You may view the entire presentations on the YouTube site at the bottom of the screen under Hadar Yaakov. Feel free to share, comment, and read the book 101 Biblical Words about the Christmas holiday, where the truth shall make you free. Yohanan 8, 31. That's the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 31. To the only wise Elohim, Yahuwah, and to his bane, Yeshua HaMashiach. Christianity and Christmas, part one. Two words that are essentially synonymous with one another. Now, the Christian, whether Baptist, Methodist, African Methodist, Episcopal, Presbyterian, or Independent Word Church, have manufactured all sort of beliefs and reasons to justify both Christianity and Christmas. Neither one can firmly be identified in the Holy Scriptures. The preacher, the pope, and the priest have led the religious believers of Christianity and Christmas down an undeniable road of falsehood and deception. It is one thing to not know the truth and continue to practice that which is not true, but to know the truth and continue to practice that which is not true is not faith at all, rather carnality, the flesh, wicked, evil, and ungodly. This post is a part is part one of a four part series and you are absolutely free to share, comment and pass along the truth that shall make you free. Now, bear in mind, this series will be a snapshot of greater truth worthy to be searched out and verified, all of which can be uncovered in the book. These posts are taken from 101 biblical words about the Christmas holiday. Let's begin this series with two obvious factors about Christmas. One, it is in a company of the greatest lie ever told. Two, the greatest lie ever told was initiated by the greatest liar of all time. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan and Eve had an illegal, unauthorized conversation about the Most High's creation. Their conversation centered on the trees in the garden. There was one tree both Adam and Eve was unquestionably restricted to eat from. There are four factors involved in persuading Eve to accept the lie of Satan. They are sight, desire, gratification, and involvement. All four factors are connected to the five recognizable senses of man. Sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. The five recognizable senses of man are the gateway of which the powers of darkness have used against men and women since the days of Adam and Eve. Everything about the Christmas celebration is fueled and perpetuated by the use of the five recognizable senses. There is a world of difference between the five recognizable senses of man and the realm of faith as described in the Bible. Essentially, Faith is, one, not seen, other than actions. Two, not heard, other than speaking logos. Three, not smelled. Four, not taste. Five, not touched. Of course, the biblical injunction and eternal truth about faith is worded in such a manner. And belief is the substance of what is expected, the proof of what is not seen. The traditional King James Version says the following, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Faith, as the scripture describes, is two things. One, substance. Two, evidence. Both the substance and evidence of faith produce the results of what is unseen. The scriptures further admonish the set apart ones to look at what is unseen, not what is seen. We are not looking on what is seen, but on what is not seen. For what is seen passes away, but what is not seen is everlasting. 
That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Now you tell me, if everything about Christmas, including the celebration of the so-called New Year, passes away, in other words, the festivities, hype, gift-giving is all over shortly thereafter and few, if any, reminisce about Christmas the remainder of the year. It is a vicious debt cycle coupled with the obvious lie that keeps one slave to debt and basking in untruths. Everything about Christmas is perpetually seen and expected based on a lie that is nowhere found in the scriptures. Now, let's categorize the depth of the lie that practically the entire world has bought into. Number one, the birth of Messiah on December 25th is the greatest lie and deception of the celebration. Number two, the evergreen tree, commonly known as a Christmas tree, is a deception and perversion of the truth. Number three, the image of the Magi and shepherds at the stable when Messiah was born is a carefully calculated deception. Number four, the exchanging of gifts is perhaps one of the greatest of perversions and practices among people worldwide. It's not that gift giving is wrong. It's the occasion and reason for the gift giving that defines the perversion and practice. Number five, songs about the so-called Christmas tree, actually an evergreen tree, is idolatry. Number six, Santa Claus is actually Satan. His representation is the proverbial maxim, can't see the forest for the trees. Number seven, the language used at Christmas time is deceptive and lies that are contrary to the word of God. For instance, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year goes against every biblical truth in the word of Elohim. This list could go on and on for a few pages, but my attempt in this series is to strike at the fulcrum of the lie of the Christmas observance. The objective of these posts is to enlighten the hearer to seek the higher walk with Yahushua and dismantle the lie that came from the greatest liar of all time, Satan. In these posts, we will look at each category mentioned earlier and expound on them starting with December the 25th and the evergreen tree until I have addressed all seven categories. The most obvious lie of December is in the name itself. December is from the word decim, which means 10, because the original secular calendar was only composed of 10 months, March through December. The name of these months are associated with Roman gods and goddesses. September, October, November, and December are simply names in a numerical chronological order. For instance, September comes from the word septum for seven. October, octo for eight. November, ovem for nine. And December, decim for ten. The 25th of December is a date long celebrated in the ancient pagan Roman Empire before the birth of Messiah. Through great persecution, Christian church leaders decided to adopt the date as their own. The following defined December 25th prior to 336 AD. Natalis, Solus, Invicti, which is the Roman birth of the unconquered son. It was a celebration on December 25th. Mithras, the Iranian son of righteousness, the winter solstice. Around 336 AD, the Christmas celebration among non-Catholics began to spread. The date of December 25th was selected, not by inspiration of the Most High or revelatory in any way, but exclusively by religious politics and certain pressure from the Roman Emperor Constantine, the so-called Great. Now why and what is the evergreen tree? The Bible is clear on the practice and use of the evergreen tree as a pagan symbol, not the tree itself, but the use of the tree by men and women associates it with paganism. 
Scores and scores of lying preachers have manufactured lie after lie to associate the evergreen tree with the birth of Messiah. Hundreds of Christian churches led by Christian pastors have evergreen trees inside their sanctuary when the scriptures are directly against the practice of decorating evergreen trees. Behold the truth of the word of Elohim. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 2. Completely destroy all the places where the nations which you are dispossessing serve their mighty ones on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. First Kings chapter 14 verse 23. For they also built for themselves high places and pillars and a shirim on every high hill and under every green tree. Second Kings chapter 16 verses 3 and 4. But he walked in the way of the sovereigns of Israel, and he also made his son pass through the fire, per the abominations of the nations whom Yahweh had dispossessed from before the children of Israel. And he slaughtered and burned incense on the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. And there's also Second Chronicles chapter 28 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 5, Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 20, chapter 3 verse 6, chapter 3 verse 13, and chapter 17 verse 2, and Ezekiel chapter 6 verse 13. Now in ancient times, the evergreen tree was worshipped as a symbol of life in the midst of winter. Romans decorated their houses with evergreen branches, including the wreath. This celebration was mainly observed during the winter solstice in ancient Rome. But the scriptures are clear on not taking on the ways of the ungodly as the prophet Jeremiah spoke. Hear the word which Yahweh speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus said Yahweh, do not learn the way of the nations, and do not be awed by the signs of the heavens, for the nations are awed by them. For the laws of these people are worthless. For one cuts a tree from the forest, work for the hands of a craftsman with a cutting tool. They beautify it with silver and gold. They strengthen it with nails and hammers so that it does not topple. They are like rounded posts and they do not speak. They have to be carried because they do not walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they do no evil, nor is it in them to do any good. That's chapters 10 verses 1 through 5. The prophet Jeremiah got his words from the Most High, and he basically is saying that evergreen trees are lifeless once cut down out of the forest. No matter how the tree is beautified, it no longer has life giving properties once it is cut down. The very fact the tree requires the help of the one who cut it down to be moved from the forest to the house serves as an indicator of the inability of the tree to do anything. The summary of that prophetic word is, do not do what they do, the heathen. Their laws are worthless to effect real change. Do not take the tree into your dwelling places. Do not fear the tree or the one who cut the tree down. They are lifeless, both the one with the axe to cut the tree and the tree itself. Now in part two, we will look at the image of the Magi and the shepherds at the manger and the exchanging of gifts at Christmas time. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Jude chapter 1, verse 25. This is H.S. Yakov, his bondservant. Shalom.